I think the best way to stay healthy, if you're currently in good health, all the obvious things really, at least to start with, eat a balanced diet, plenty of fruits and vegetables, avoid too many fried foods, deep fried and grilled foods, don't smoke of course, drink in moderation, take a reasonable amount of exercise. These are the standard guidelines that you'll hear from just about every authority. And there's good evidence from large-scale studies that uh, this approach works. It will add health to your life and life to your health. We know this from the Epic Norfolk study and from Hale and other trials. I think that the question gets more interesting when we move on to the next level. Can we add something to this? I believe that we can, and I think that um, for most urbanized people living a relatively sedentary life, uh, even if you do eat a balanced diet, there's pretty good evidence that uh, you simply can't get all the things that you need to make sure that your metabolism is correctly configured, if you will. And I think at this point, we have arrived at a moment in time when supplements actually make a good deal of sense. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of A to Z tablets that you can buy over the counter. Most of these are so poorly formulated that they have nothing other than a talismanic value. But we're seeing now uh, some quite interesting pharmaconutritional support programs arriving on the market, and I think that there is a real need for these. I think that um, on the balance of the evidence available to us, this is the logical next step to take. Well, pharmaconutrition is a relatively new term. I think it probably isn't familiar to, to many people, so let me try and define it. Nutritional biochemistry is the science that looks at the way in which nutritional actives interact with the biochemistry of, um, of, in this case, humans. Nutritional pharmacology is a very small step on from nutritional biochemistry. By that, I mean nutritional pharmacology or pharmaconutrition is when we start to use the pharmacological properties of food derivatives, which might be vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, fiber types, to positively impact on a person's health. So one would start off by analyzing in as much detail as we can the different metabolic errors that we know are involved in predisposing to and driving the degenerative diseases. And then rather than looking for a magic bullet, a specific enzyme or a receptor, instead we try to reconfigure as many of those metabolic errors as possible using the known pharmacological activities of all of these different food derivatives. Completely different to the pharmaceutical model, not a magic bullet. Instead, what we're trying to do is to put in place a comprehensive nutritional support system. I think that um, if you look at the historical records, we have, until relatively recently, perforcedly been a very active kind of an animal. Uh, if you look at the people who talk about the Paleolithic diet, eminent scientists, Lauren Cordain, Boyd Eaton, Staffan Lindbergh, people like that, they are looking at cultures where people are living at a rate of four, four and a half, five thousand calories a day, eating a lot of food and most of that unprocessed. In that environment, I think you probably are getting most of what you need. And that was true until relatively recently, until the mid-Victorian period, uh, when the bulk of society was blue-collar, most ac social activities were manual, and we've done some very detailed analytical work showing that even uh, 150 years ago, people were running at between four, five, up to 6,000 calories a day, and eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, omega-3s. They were very healthy, the Victorians, lived as long as we do, and had very few degenerative diseases. Our situation has changed. Modern technology, cheap energy, has made it possible for us to live very sedentary lives. For many of us, we're living at um, 2,200 calories or so per day. That's within 10 or 15% of basal metabolic rate. That's historically unprecedented. And so if you're only eating you know, for 2,000 or so calories a day, you can't get what you need. And if you make the situation worse by adding in poor food choices, lots of empty calories, you may be normal weight, you may be overweight, increasingly people are, but you will not be getting all the different micro and phytonutrients that you need. So uh, we've got to a point now in this obesogenic, pathogenic society where supplements are becoming very, very necessary.